Look, it has me so mad. It's got me cracked up. It's got me jacked up. I'm just like, Aah! oh my gosh. <sighs> the stock market has me so mad. I am so angry at the stock market, okay? Public account today was up $4,732. I made five figures today. Five figures. And I'm mad, okay? And when I say I'm mad, I say I'm really mad, okay? When I saw the stock market today, that was my exact face. I feel like I've had my flapjacks flipped like 50 times by this market, okay? Let me explain in this video why this market has me so upset right now. And I'm mad, okay? I'm really mad. Let me explain this, okay? Before I say that, just thank you subscribers, okay? Holy smokers, we're gonna hit a half million subscribers here over the next few weeks. I just wanna say thank you for being subscribed. Even if I get mad, okay? NASDAQ, let's look at the NASDAQ. You know, bottomed out right around 6,600 back, what was that, about two months ago now, right? And it goes on this crazy climb. I mean, this absolutely parabolic, nutso climb to over 9,200 as of just a few days ago, right? NASDAQ as of a few days ago was up over 20% on a one year chart. 20 flipping percent, okay? Oh my goodness, I'm like a football player who just got off the star. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. Let's just take a peek, okay? This is now looking at a one month chart for the NASDAQ composite. Look at the climb it went on and then it was finally starting. The market was finally starting to go down. What do you know? Oh my goodness, it was finally starting to dip a bit. It was finally doing, it was down to about 8,700 or so. And then today, things start out red and then it goes up and up and up and up and the mysterious buyer that nobody knows who it is just buys up the market and buys it up and every time that market tries to dip that mysterious buyer that mysterious organization is just buying and buying and buying okay new claims for unemployment insurance came out today almost three million in the last week almost three million Economists expected 2.7 million, so it was worse than everybody expected, which 3 million is a disaster, okay? And it was worse than everybody expected, and somehow, mysteriously, the NASDAQ climbs throughout the day. How does that, oh, how does that make any sense, guys? What in the world is going on? Look at this chart. You wanna see one of the, the most startling charts you're, you'll ever see in economics in your entire life? Look at this chart here. This is initial claims since March, okay? Look at the Great Recession on this chart. It barely shows up. I mean, literally, the Great Recession looks completely irrelevant compared to what is going on now. Completely, completely, completely irrelevant. It's not even close. Look at that, I mean, oh, the Great Recession, it was so bad, oh my gosh, remember how many people were unemployed? Oh man, that really sucked. And then you go ahead and look at a chart and it's just a small blip. It's a baby compared to what's going on right now when it comes to initial jobless claims and unemployment insurance claims. It's, it's extraordinary. Let's be very clear, 36 and a half million over the past eight weeks. That number is, it's just mind blowing, simply mind blowing. And I know what, if somebody's super, super super bullish and super, super optimistic on this whole scenario. And of course, you're gonna say, well, as things open back up, those numbers should come down and they should come down. But just because they start to come down doesn't mean they're not incredibly high still and ridiculously high, okay? The government knows they have to continue to support things. The government's very worried that when things do open back up over the next few months, it's not gonna be the way it was. I mean, let's be very clear about that. The White House just came out, news breaking within the last like 30 minutes. The White House would likely support a new round of stimulus checks. We've already had a ton of stimulus checks sent out there. The White House wants to send more stimulus checks. You, you know, the Dems, they, they just announced yesterday they want a $3 trillion deal, and that one included a bunch more stimulus checks, money to state and local governments. And you just look at this, it's pretty clear on both sides of the party, they, they realize we need, to, we need to pump more money out there. What we've done, and, and the, the numbers have been you know, just startling, the numbers out there that the government has put out there for trying to support the system, right? And yet, they still feel like it's not even close to being enough. We're gonna need trillions more pumped into this. That's extraordinary, okay? Meanwhile, as of today, 
The NASDAQ is up over 13% in the past one year. Up over 13% in the past one year? Are you kidding me? You must be kidding me, okay? The S&P 500 is break even in the past one year. You're telling me that, that you know, 12 months ago, things were the same as they are today and valuations should be the same as, as, you know, basically 12 months ago? How? How? What reality does that make sense? Literally, what reality does it make sense for the stock market to be the same exact as it was 12 months ago? I would love to hear an explanation for that because that makes absolutely zero sense. And never mind the fact that the S&P 500 was actually up over 4% in the past 12 months as of Friday. That was a whole other, like how? how? How does that make sense, okay? Let's just run through a small list of the bad news. I, I couldn't write it all out. It would have taken me you know, a half an hour to do that, okay? Here's just some of the bad news. Unemployment, sky high. Literally the highest since the Great Depression. And I believe that unemployment will probably be above 10% for probably about a year, if not longer than a year, okay? But the fact is, unemployment sky high right now. Number two, company earnings are down massively. We just had the first earnings season that was only, you know, was kind of affected by Rony Rona, right? Which was the month of March. And we just had those earnings Almost every single company reported, you know, pretty decently down earnings year over year, unless they were a very, very select stock that, that somehow benefited. And those were few and far between. And never mind that, this upcoming quarter, it's going to be way worse. I mean, get ready for the real ugly earnings this next quarter. Oh my goodness, okay? Well, you know, the, the real ugly earnings are coming, okay? Number three, Rony Rona's not stopping. This hasn't ended. It's not over. It's not like, woo, we won against Rony Rona. No, it's still going on. Every Every day the numbers keep going higher and higher and higher, okay? Number four, bankruptcies. You know, even though the Fed's trying to backstop everything, there's still going to be a lot of small business bankruptcies, mid-sized business bankruptcies, and even some big companies that go under. I mean, you just you even, even with all the backstops, you still can't support it all. Number five, balance sheets of every single corporation pretty much out there has gotten worse over the past year than what it was. And there might be one out of every 20 stocks that actually has a better balance sheet now than they had 12 months ago. But I can tell you almost every single S&P 500 company out there, their balance sheet has gotten worse. They've had to take out a bunch of debt. They had to you know, draw down on credit facilities. They've had to do whatever it takes so they could make it through this big Rony Rona mess, which leads to number six. We don't even have a fax for Rony Rona yet. Once again, this is still going on. We haven't, you know, found the cure for Rony Rona or anything that will help with it. It's just, you know, we're still in the, the same scenario we were in months ago. Number seven, the U.S. oil and gas industry is, you know, it, it's on the it's on the verge of, of being completely done. Most of these oil companies that were drilling out in the shale, they're done, and they might never come back. Because even if oil prices get back to, you know, forty dollars, fifty dollars, the U.S. players still wouldn't really make any money at those prices. And even if oil goes to sixty or seventy, which is where, you know, the US players would kind of need if they're going to actually make some money. A lot of the banks, are they really going to loan money to those US you know, oil players? That's a, that's a big industry. And how many jobs are created adjacent to that industry? You know, it's hard to see anything in that, that industry surviving, okay? That industry is pretty much done. Number eight, huge industries need bailouts, okay? We're talking, I mean, think about the airlines industry. The airlines industry, I mean, it went from, you know, the, oh, the airlines are awesome and they're doing so good to literally uh, pretty much every single U.S. airline would be bankrupt right now. All their stocks would be at zero today. Zero like Robert De Niro back when he was in Last Action Hero. If it was not for the fact that the government literally bailed these guys out. Think about that. Southwest would probably be zero today. American Airlines probably zero today and all the rest of them as well. And if they weren't zero already, they were going to be zero. The government had to bail them out. Think about that. And that's not the only industry. There was a ton of other industries, okay? And keep in mind, by the way, the banks are basically government banks now, okay? Even though they're, they're like, oh yeah, we're a private bank. Nah, pretty much no. You're a government bank now, okay? Number nine, GDP declines are like something we've never seen before. Pretty much in modern history and throughout history. Like, wait till this next quarter comes out. The GDP numbers are going to be, it's going to be the worst we've ever seen. Let's just put it that way. And, and definitely in modern history. It's going to make everything else look like a complete joke. A third of the population can't even go out because of age. You know, obviously, if you're afraid of getting Rony Rona, it's an age-related thing. As well as if you have some underlying conditions there. So a third of the population, they can't even go out, man. Even if they wanted to go out and do stuff, they really can't. 
So, you know, that's some other things factor in. You know, people think, well, some people are going to go out and they're going to do stuff. Sure, some people are. But what happens when a huge segment of the economy can't still? These are things to think about. And by the way, I could have wrote down another 10, 20, 30 bad news things. Those are just some of the biggest that come to my mind. Okay, I didn't even include things like the fact that a lot of these corporations aren't even matching 401ks anymore. A lot of them have halted pension plans. And, and you know, if, oh my goodness, we could go through so many things. Okay, and what do we have for the good news? What, what is the actual good news? One is stimulus checks are going out. Hopefully people go out and spend that money. I don't know. Maybe they're just spending that money on the Robinhood app. I don't really know. No, but the good news is stimulus checks have gone out and that's that's you know money has been credited into people's bank accounts. Number two, the Fed is trying to buy everything in sight. It doesn't matter what it is, the Fed is trying to buy it right now. And number three, government wants to keep pu pumping out money. And this is on both sides of the party. They're both very confident. It's just you know how much money they put out there, what gets money. But at the end of the day, they're just they just want to put money, money, money. Get it out there, get it to people, get it to businesses. Who cares where it goes? We just need money in the system. System, okay, and so when you see the bad news case and you see the good news case, tell me once again why does the S and P 500 deserve to be break even over the past 12 months? Because it just doesn't make sense to be quite frank. It just doesn't. It, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. And I know some investors are saying, well, you know, the Nasdaq's not at an all-time high right now. It hit like 9,800 back before Roni Rona took off. Okay. So we're not there yet. Yeah. We were up to like 9,200 approaching 9,300, but Hey, we're not at the 9,800. Okay. Keep in mind when it hit 9,800, it did that for like a week. Okay. For like literally one week and things were dramatically different then and dramatically different in a good way, not a bad way. The world has changed in a massive way. So the fact that it's saying, well, it's not quite up to all time highs yet. I think that's just a ridiculous, completely ridiculous way of looking at it. And who is buying this market? This is what really, really makes me mad. I'm like, who is buying this? Because the fact is, the majority of big investors are not putting money in this market right now. We know this through SEC filings. We can see this. So can somebody tell me who is buying Apple stock at a 26 forward PE? Apple stock never trades at a 26 forward P. I mean, never. It, not even any time in remote history has Apple traded anywhere close to a 26 forward PE. And yet it's trading at a 26 forward P and somebody out there is mysteriously buying up Apple stock to push it up, push it up. Who's doing this? Literally, who's doing it? Because it's not Buffett. And I can tell you it's not Felipe down the street who just bought one Apple share today on his Robinhood account, okay? It's not him. Who's buying Apple stock at a 26 Ford P? That's what I really want to know. I No, no, seriously, I really want to get to the bottom of this. Who the hell is buying Apple stock at a 26 Ford P? I would love to, I would love, I would love to find out that answer. I really would. Who, oh, who is buying Shopify stock at a 5,000 forward PE? Who's doing it? Okay, I, no, no, I really, I really, really, I really, 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 I really want to figure this out. Who is buying Shopify stock at a 5,000 forward P? Can someone point them out to me? Because I really, I just want to, I just want to talk to them and I just want to, just want to understand why they're buying Shopify at $754 a share. Please. Who, GM's getting a bid now? GM's getting a bid? Why don't we just buy every stock ever in creation in the stock market? Who cares about valuation? Who cares what the worries are about the business model long term? And who cares what, what Ford P it trades at? Let's just buy everything. GM. GM's up 4% today. GM's getting a bid. GM, General Motors, they're getting a bid. Uh, who is buying all this, guys? The, the fact is we have so much good news now priced in for the second half of 2020. Just so much good news. We need, you know, the world to get back on track like it, like it never stopped. We need businesses to open back up and business to be robust and continue to build into the fall time, into the winter time. We need corporate earnings to get right back to where basically they were because the markets have climbed almost back to where they were, right? S&P 500's break even over the last 12 months. NASDAQ's up 13, 14% in the past 12 months. We need basically corporate earnings to get right back to where they were, right back and really, really quick. 
And when you're in that type of market, you have priced in so much good news that it's hard to actually impress the market and to get the market to go up past that. The fact is the market should be discounting the, the fact that, oh my gosh, things might not go as planned. Oh my gosh, corporate earnings might not get right back. It might take a while. And yet the market has no patience right now. The fact that I was up $4,732 in a public account and you know I easily made five figures plus today, I think it's ridiculous. I'll be completely honest. I think it's ridiculous. I think in this type of market, this shouldn't be happening. I just don't, okay? This market has no patience right now. Let's be very clear. The stock market right now has no patience, and the stock market right now is fishy. And I mean fishy. I mean, it smells like a big, like, sushi pot. That's how fishy the stock market is, okay? And let's be very clear, you know, and I don't want to go on conspiracy theories, but let's just be very clear. Everyone wants the stock market higher, right? Everyone does, right? The president, he tweets about it all the time. He definitely wants the stock market higher. There's much higher probability the, the president of the United States gets reelected if the stock market's high, right? The real estate market, they all want the stock market higher, right? If you keep in mind, if there's confidence in the stock market, it's going up and assets are increasing and people's you know stock market accounts are going up, they're much more likely to go ahead and buy real estate and feel confident about making a big purchasing decision. But keep in mind, real estate for most folks, that's their biggest purchase. So if you wanna keep the real estate market strong, also keep the stock market strong. They can go hand in hand. And if the stock market is down dramatically, then people are gonna feel much less confident and they're also gonna be more poor. They're gonna have less assets. And if they have less assets, then they're less likely to be able to buy a house, right? So real estate market, they need a high stock market. Retirees, we have the baby boomer generation all retiring right now or getting very close to retiring. All those folks, and a lot of those folks are, guess what? They're the folks that vote these politicians in office, right? I mean, let's be honest. Most people in their 20s and 30s, those aren't the people that are voting people in and out of office. They're really not. You know, they, they, you know, they don't do that for the most part. It's the retirees. They're the ones that are the, the diehard voters for their parties and things like that. And all these people, they're all retired or they're all going to retire. And a ton of them have money invest in the stock market. They all want a high stock market. They all want a high stock market. They don't want, they don't want the NASDAQ to be 6,000, 5,000. They don't want the Dow to be 18,000, 15,000. Because guess what? They live off that money. They don't want that. None of those individuals want that, okay? And they're not the only ones, okay? None of them care about valuation. And that's what just gets me really mad, okay? All they care about is high. They just want it all high. Who, who wouldn't? If you think about it, if you're retired right now or you're about to retire, what do you want? You want your you want your stock market account to be as high as possible, right? That's what you want. If, if you're sitting in office right now, you want the stock market to be as high as possible. You don't want a low stock market. And everybody in between, they all want a high stock market. They don't care about valuation. Just pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. We just want high, high, high. And at the end of the day, that's why I'm really mad. I look at the stock market and the valuations are just ridiculous considering the risks we actually have out there. There's no patience. All it is, is just it's just pump out of nowhere with no identity of who's actually really buying out there in a major way. And that is the most frustrating thing to me. And that's why I'm mad because all it is, it's just, let's just get this stock market as high as possible. Who cares about valuation? If valuation doesn't matter, and uh, those are the type of stock markets that are that are very, very scary. And uh, you know, I know it's driven some people seeing this to short positions and I put options, things like that. I can't do it, because just because I'm mad about it, it doesn't mean it can't keep going up. It doesn't. It, who knows? Maybe maybe Apple's going to go to a 30 forward P and it will still be getting a bid. Maybe it goes to a 40 forward P. You never know when the stuff ends. It could end in a, in a week from now. It could end in a few months from now. It could end in a year from now. And right now, the market doesn't care about valuations. The market doesn't care about risk. The market doesn't care about all the real negative things going on out there. It doesn't care about any of that. All it cares about is... Thank you for watching. Have a great day.